when Beethoven's Misa Solemnis opens with these three repeated majestic chords on the word Kyrie, right away we know that this is not just a conventional setting of the Mass. While he follows the form and text of the traditional Catholic liturgy, it is also his very personal interpretation of that text. It calls for enormous forces, a full orchestra, a large chorus, four soloists, all are asked to perform at the very limits of their capabilities, sometimes even beyond them. It took Beethoven three years to complete the Missa, finishing toward the end of 1822. It appears that he completed the Kyrie and Gloria, which he wrote in a more traditional church style, then abandoned the project for almost a year. And by the time he returned to compose Credo, Sanctus, and Agnus Dei, he had moved to a much freer style. When I say freer, I certainly don't mean easier. Mozart, they say, was able to get on a coach and a few hours later get off with a whole opera in his head. But Beethoven agonized over every note. It is said that he often had horrible headaches and bouts of depression while composing. He would cross out sections and later rewrite them in almost illegible scroll. If you look at pages of his sketchbook for this piece, you're amazed that the music ever got performed at all. The biggest challenge for me as a conductor is to try to realize the composer's vision. Therefore, most of my preparation goes into studying the score. And it's a long process, a never-ending process. I came to see this as far more of a chamber piece, so I often wanted it slower, more legato, by the time I went into rehearsal, I had a clear idea of how I wanted the whole piece to go. The first note is the most wholesome, wholesome thing here, and it's, it's not being shortchanged for anything after that. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, because it seems to uh, take too much uh, to think about what comes after, and the note is suffering from that. Same place? next job was to communicate to the performers this interpretation in the most effective way. You have to do something more than just say faster, slower, louder, softer. Please remember that the energy in piano is much more important than energy in forte. It's an evening and it's harder, I know, but oh, I don't need the sound, I need the energy, the energy in text and in I like to have the score memorized so I can relate to the performers directly with my hands, my body, and my eyes. I often think about a comparison, music and architecture. They both are a process of building a structure. The 
the score is like a blueprint. And when you perform the piece in concert, you're building that structure moment by moment. is full of these enormous contrasts, both in dynamics and tempi. In the glorious section, there are moments when the entire ensemble, the orchestra and chorus, drop to a pianissimo from a highest degree of fortissimo. And a moment later, back up again. Glorifica, glorifica, glorifica. The same kind of rhythmic and dynamic contrasts occur also in the Sanctus. Credo section, there is this simply astounding fugue on the text Et Vitam Venturi. It starts so gently. The theme goes like this. Et Vitam Venturi, et seculi, Amen. And the answer is on the word Amen. 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 Combine the two and you get this. Et Vitam Venturi. Beethoven doesn't leave it at that. Now he doubles the tempo, finishly complicates the counterpoint, like this. A friend of Beethoven, who was there when he was working on that part, described hearing him behind the locked door of his studio, singing, howling, and stomping his feet in ecstasy. This has been called the most difficult piece of choral music ever written. Beethoven wrote for voices as if they were instruments. And that's what makes the Misa Solemnis, and certainly the Ninth, so hard to sing. But in a truly sublime Benedictus, he turns a violin, an instrument, into another solo voice.
first movement I actually learned was the last one, the Agnus Dei. And it remains closest to my heart to this day. This part, all in B minor, is the darkest section of the entire work. Waves of emotions as if calling out to be released. I grew up in St. Petersburg, and I'm thinking of the moment when, after a long, cold winter, the first rays of the warm spring sun come out. Something is reborn. This is the feeling you get after the somberness of the Agnus Day when Beethoven transitions into the Dona Nobis section, which for me is the real message of the piece. He wrote in a score at this moment, Bitte um innern und äußern Frieden. A prayer for inner and outer peace. And the measure when that music starts, it's the most precious moment of the piece. One feels now that the match should be over. But just when you think that, he interrupts with this warlike material. That keeps conflicting with the Grand Has Peace theme. text in the Mass itself to support this. It's a unique setting, and it's not easy for a conductor to reconcile these two musical ideas.
But finally, the spirit of peace prevails.